three, two, one. So how many of you saw that and thought, wow, I could never do that? <laughs> That's a really common response. But why do you think you could never do that? Because you're scared of heights? Because you've never really thought about doing it? Or because you've been conditioned to believe that you can't? Now, when I was growing up, I wanted to be absolutely everything. I wanted to be a doctor, a nurse, a professional skier, a stockbroker, and a firefighter. <laughs> See, we're all born with this incredible gift, the gift of imagination. But as we get older, we're told what is and is not possible, what we can and can't do. That imagination that once fueled our existence becomes extinguished. Now, one of the things that stuck with me through all of the years was I wanted to be a base jumper. Base jumping is jumping from a fixed object with a parachute on your back, as you just saw, Base is actually an acronym for building, antenna, span, and earth. Now these are the four main objects that we jump from. Now when I told people that I wanted to be a base jumper, I was always met with this massive amount of opposition. I was straight up laughed at. I was told all of the reasons why I couldn't be a jumper. Now this doesn't just happen to me. We all have experience with bias and judgments but those limitations aren't something we're born with. They're something that we learn over time through repetition. So we have to start at the beginning. We're all born and raised at the mercy of our parents. We learn from them how to walk, talk, feed ourselves, we use the toilet, you get the idea. But what we also learn on a very subconscious level is how to behave. And we develop this perception about what we're capable of. Now that perception does its very best to shape who we become. Now there are many different forms of bias that we experience as we grow up, mainly surrounding our age, ethnicity, and most prevalent in my life in sports, gender. Now there are also many factors that help dictate both our beliefs in ourselves and in our abilities. Factors such as religion, our overall environment, and our socialization. And as we get older, we become even more subjected to these perceived limitations through the media, whether it be the news, reality shows, the internet, social media, all of these factors, all of these different portals of information can lead us down a path of limited belief in ourselves. We end up suppressing our true ability because we can develop this fear of judgment. At least that's how it's been in my experience. See, I'm a female in a very male-dominated sport, a sport that I entered into at a very young and impressionable age. I started base jumping when I was just 16 years old. Now, over the years, I have encountered total disbelief, shock, rude remarks, and really, really harsh criticism about what I do. Now, these people who are judging me, you know, they had never seen me jump. They had never seen my ability firsthand, but because of the way that they were raised, they judged me based on this assumption of what girls are capable of. Now, I started base jumping when I was very young, but I was also very um, inexperienced, let's say, in the world. I was also very sheltered because I was homeschooled. Now, I can see some of you right now are like, oh, she was homeschooled. This all makes sense now. <laughs> So yes, I was homeschooled, and because of that, I didn't really have a very firm grasp on how mean people could really be. That is, until I did my first jump, and an internet forum was brought to my attention. The subject was yours truly, and some of the things these people said were just absolutely vicious. I had people claim that this was just a reckless, attention-seeking endeavor that was surely going to end in tragedy. I had people tell me that they wished that I would die base jumping, because the world would be a better place without people like me. My integrity, my upbringing, and even speculation on my sexual preference were all brought up on this forum. It was some really nasty stuff, and it was really hard for a 16-year-old girl to be reading all of this. I mean, people can be absolutely vicious 
when they can hide behind a username. Now, naturally, I was pretty devastated when I read all this mean stuff about me, but I was also very fortunate because I had a group of, of key supporters in my life who really encouraged me to keep moving forward despite anyone's opinion. You know, some of the greatest advice I ever received was to really focus on my motivation and to push through the boundaries I faced. Because if I would have listened to all of the judgment and criticism that I received, not just on the internet, but in my day-to-day -day life, I would have missed out on so many amazing experiences and opportunities. And I definitely wouldn't be where I am today. So now I know what this bias is, but how does it really affect us? Now, by a show of hands, how many of you have at one point or another been told you can't do something? Everybody's hand should be up right now. Because we all have experience with people telling us all of the reasons that we can't. You're not good enough, strong enough, old enough, talented enough. You're not dedicated enough. These are all things that I heard while I was growing up. See, having someone try to push their limits on you is a really hurtful thing, right? But it happens all the time. And what is so crazy to me is how normal it seems, how we've just accepted it as a part of normal life. Now, one of the horrible things that we learn to do when we hear something over and over again for our entire lives is we actually start to believe it. But even worse, we eventually become masters at convincing ourselves of our own limitations. We start this vicious cycle of negative self-talk. Oh, I can't do this because I'm a girl. I can't do that because I'm too old. We start this pattern where we no longer even need outside criticism and judgment to prevent us from doing something. We do it ourselves. We create our own limitations in our mind and we become our own worst enemy. Now, that's something that affects each and every one of us, and we really need to learn how to face it and move forward. Now, the first time that I traveled to Switzerland to base jump, I experienced this firsthand. Now, Switzerland is really well known within my community because there are these huge, massive cliffs that tower over this green valley below, and the base jumps are legal, so there's no running from the cops. <laughs> Now, from the second that I stepped off of the train and I looked up, I was like, oh, this is where I was supposed to be. I was so excited. So I ran and I registered as a base jumper. I dropped all my gear off at my hotel room and I went to meet up with some friends. Now, they started telling me about all of the different exit points, the places that you can jump from and how exciting they were. But then they started to tell me that I should stick to jumping just a few of them because the other ones were super dangerous. And unless you are an expert of expert jumper, you should not be jumping over there. Now, somehow, in them telling me this, I forgot that I had been jumping for seven years. But because of their enthusiasm and because of my mental state, I allowed their limiting beliefs, their limitations, to affect me and dissuade me from doing something that I was more than capable of pulling off. And because of that, I missed out on some pretty amazing jumps. Now, one of the things that I've come to realize over years of exposure, whether or not you're male or female, is we all fear opposition on both ends of the spectrum for the very same reason. We fear opposing others' ideas because we want to be liked, and most people don't take another opinion very well. And on the other side, we fear opposing others' ideas because we want to fit in. But fitting in comes at a pretty hefty price tag most of the time, and that price is not living to your full potential. It was Albert Einstein who said, great spirits have always encountered violent opposition for mediocre minds. And in my experience, those who so diligently opposed what I wanted to do were the ones who wanted to be doing the exact same thing I was. But because of their limitations, because of their limited beliefs, they didn't follow that path. Now, because they didn't follow that path, my dreams were met with criticism and judgment. So in knowing this, we can go forth into the world leading very safe and normal lives, adhering to these ridiculous stereotypes. I mean, it's really easy to continue to accept these limitations in our own lives. It's easy because it's non-confrontational, and quite frankly, it's comfortable. 
But in the end, it's so dissatisfactory and it leaves most people with this huge blank spot in their lives. So we can accept it or we can challenge it and we can use it as fuel to propel us towards our dreams. We can use the naysayers as motivation and we can prove our adversaries wrong. Now I know in my life, when I'm told that I'm incapable of doing something for whatever reason, I always take such pleasure in succeeding despite others' doubts. Now I don't do it just to prove them wrong, I do it for myself obviously, but it's always just this fun little bonus when I get to accomplish something that I was told that I couldn't. <laughs> And that's usually what I look like. <laughs> so now we know what this bias is. Why do we let it continue? We know what it is. We know where it comes from. So why is it such a struggle for us to stand up and say, no, no, I won't adhere to your ideas and standards of what being a girl means. No, I won't back down and become a lesser version of myself because you're uncomfortable. Now, I'm not saying everyone should go and jump off a cliff. <laughs> But I do encourage each and every one of you to recognize and push through the boundaries that you face in your own lives. And if along the way you decide you do want to jump off a cliff, just let me know. Now the next greatest thing that we can do moving forward is to simply not limit others with our own beliefs. Instead, we can encourage them to follow their dreams and push through the self-perceived and social limitations that they face. We can applaud them in following their dreams. Because I pushed through the social bias that I faced while I was growing up, I have had the ability to make base jumping not just my passion, but my profession. And I'm able to travel the world through sponsors and, and film connections and do what I love. Now, moving forward, making this shift in our lives can do amazing things for us. Following our dreams, despite any of the bias that we face, truly keeps us young, and being the most authentic representation of ourselves will inspire others to do the exact same thing. And I truly think the world would be a much better place with a little more inspiration from people like you. Thank you.